guys after subscribing to this channel please make sure that you also press the bell icon so that no notification no new video of mine any educational video is missed by anybody hello dear students today we'll be talking about the ureters and the course of ureters in the pelvis and in the abdomen one of the most important questions in your exams has been asked many a times and would want, would be asked henceforth as well so the anatomy of the ureters in the uh, uh, pelvis is obviously very important not only this thing has been asked but also you know the points of injury of the ureter and how can we prevent these injuries that means applied anatomy basically has been asked so since my anatomy series is going on i have already taken a lot of lectures earlier on on the various um, Uh, structures of the pelvis and the abdominal wall uh, i have now come down to uh, last class was on uh, bladder and bladder anatomy obviously the bladder relationships and uh, the applied anatomy today's class will be upon ureter the course of ureter the places that injury can happen and how to prevent that injury so let's go forward and study more about ureter so obviously the ureters they are the urinary conduits which carry urine from kidneys to the bladder they are hollow muscular tubes which are retroperitoneal in location which is the reason why we as gynecologists we're not able to see the ureters you know right there in front of us and because of which there is a high chance of them being caught being injured being you know um, cauterized so all these problems is there and more and more with the advent of use of uh, you know the uh, monopolar cautery uh, or cautery let's say you know the lateral spread of current is high so because of which the chance of uh, you know ureter injury ureteric injury is even more especially the people who are doing laparoscopy who who have learnt laparoscopy will know this fact for sure that you know saline is the you know the the fluid which it is uh, basically carrying actually it's it's more of uh, you know the the fluid is basically you know of the composition of salt a lot of salts are there salt and water very good conductor of electricity and because of which it catches the cautery catches the current it flows through it and in the result it cauterizes it as such also the the spread of current in monopolar cautery uh, you know uh, the lateral spread is very high so because of which that can easily get injured and uh, you know the problem is definitely more and why is it more because basically for cauterizing the uterine artery you need more current because the walls are thick you don't want any bleeding to happen so you keep cauterizing more and because of which the lateral spread is actually more and ureters are right in proximity of that for you for all those who want a better understanding of this topic there's one more uh, uh, you know this uh, lecture of mine a, a very good video in which i've tried to describe to you uh, you know the anatomy between the ureters and the uterine artery which uh, has been pretty popular in the on the youtube I, many of you must have already seen it but i'm putting the link in the description go forward and watch that video as well to just you know open your horizons and make you understand the anatomy even further like i always say when you have to be surgeons you might as well be good ones so which is why you understand every step of the way which i'm trying to tell you so I'll, i'll be speaking less of you know the things which are there already in the book which you can just read through i'll i'll try to explain you more through videos and uh, through the pictures and through diagrams that i've tried to include uh, which will help you understand better when you're doing the surgery so anyways why so they are basically retroperitoneal in location which is the reason why we as gynecologists were not able to you know kind of locate them uh properly and to trace them properly so um uh let's let's go further and understand their anatomy so they basically have three parts one is the pa- part which is there in the kidney itself so it's one is one part is the u- the uh, ureter in the pelvis of the kidney then starts its abdominal part which is the upper half is the abdominal part is around 12.5 cm so the total length being 25 cm the upper half is 12.5 cm which is there in the abdomen abdominal part and then comes the lower half which is the pelvic part which is 12.5 cm itself and the diameter is around 3 to 4 mm and why do i say that why is it important because a stone which is a, a ureteric stone or kidney stone which is you know 5 mm in diameter is got lesser chance to pass through okay and a sm- smaller stone let's say 2.5 to even 3 usually passes through so um, a, a stone of 5 to 6 mm diameter might have a chance of development of obstruction of chance of development of you know back flow reflux hydro hydro ureter hydronephrosis and a, cha- a smaller stone will be able to pass through still this is not your decision always refer the patient to the concerned nephrologist or urologist now uh, only the pelvic part is discussed here in our a uh, scenario because it's basically uh, more important to the gynecologist but nevertheless i will be discussing a little bit about the abdominal part as well because half information 
will not register in your mind. We'll trace it right from the kidney, right? So the pelvic curator, uh, I'll show you a video after this uh, with the help of which you'll be able to understand the anatomy better. Uh, this is the one. So this is the pelvic part of the ureter. This is the pelvic part of the ureter. And here the course of the abdominal part, it starts. When it starts over here, I'll just run through this uh, video so that you're able to see this part is actually the abdominal part, right? And from here, when it starts coursing medially, here is the ischial spine. Can you see this? I'll just pause it a little. Here is actually the abdominal part. In the abdominal part, it's lying on the sauce major muscle. That's what it is expected of you when you're talking about, you know, talking of the abdominal part of the of the ureter. This actually, this highlighted portion is the sauce muscle. And this is the iliacus muscle, this one, right? So iliosauce, we many times we call it iliosauce. It's basically the abdominal part. So over here, see, it's lying almost on the medial border of the sauce major muscle, right? Right ahead of the sauce major muscle. And here, if you can see the ischial spine, it's here where it's going to move medially forwards. Uh, this is probably the pelvic part and the part which we are going to be, you know, kind of more concerned with in being gynecologists. So here it bends a little towards forwards and medially at the level of ischial spine. Over here, it's lying on the sauce major muscle and its relationship over here is very, very important to the iliac artery. See, over here, can you see this is the aorta? This is the right and left common iliac artery. And here is where it divides into external and internal iliac artery. So going closer, if you see, this is the common iliac artery. This is the external iliac. This is the internal iliac. At the level of the junction of these two, ureter and see over here somewhere you know will be the uterine artery it's a branch of internal iliac artery i'll show that figure as well to you so can you see this that it's like at the level of sacroiliac joint over here is actually the division of the common iliac artery into external and internal iliac artery and at the junction of this division the ureter is kind of lying over it Definitely in relation with the middle border of uh, the iliosauce muscle, but also at the level of the, the, the division of common iliac into external and internal iliac. And now everything will be removed for you to understand better. And then it traverses even down, down, down and down until it reaches the iliac, uh, this thing uh, is the ischial spine. And then suddenly it turns forwards and medially. And this course I'll take up in the so this is the 3D look. Have a look at that. It's going. This is they're trying to show that here is the bladder. The bladder and its relations I had already mentioned in the last uh, lecture of mine very beautifully. Again, uh, taking a, a 3D uh, you know image, and now we'll see the next diagram. In fact, this I'll take up first. So this is the division. Here's the common iliac artery, external and internal iliac artery, and it's lying right at the junction of this. After a while, you know, this uh, iliac artery, internal iliac artery will give away the uterine artery branch. And then you'll see that uterine artery runs absolutely 90 degrees to the ureter, uh, actually over the ureter. And then this is called as water under the bridge. So over here, if you can see, you saw this, this is the, this is the ovarian fossa actually over here. And here you see, this is the division. This is how it looks. This is the uterine artery. And this is the ureter. Can you see this? Over here, this is the ureter. And this at right angles is the uterine artery. That's how, that's the relationship of the uterine artery with ureter. But what you do is while you're doing a hysterectomy is that you push, push, push. You cut the uh, broad ligament from behind and in front and it goes lateral. So you can easily put a clamp over here. It's only when the clamp slips. And I'll give you another answer. One of the answers of how can you damage the ureter, it's when you've not put a proper clamp on the uterine artery or you've not taken proper su sutures or the suture goes lax and when the, uh, you know, it starts bleeding and it starts retracting laterally in order to attempt to clamp and control the bleeding, you inadvertently clamp the ureter. That's the reason why uterine artery pedicle, the most important pedicle in hysterectomy and should be taken very, very diligently. No uh, rush. No, uh, you know, heroics. Be very, very calm, cool, composed and very, very, uh, you know, diligent in taking uterine artery pedicle. 
so uh, you saw that how it is you know lying at 90 degrees to the uterine artery over here and one more figure i'd like to show this is what it looks like actually why you can't see the ureters because it's totally retroperitoneal and if you can see the broad ligament what happens over here see it's in in resting state we say the the tube it rests on the uh, on the ureter okay that's what we say in resting state if you just put the put the uterus down right now it's antiverted most probably uterine manipulators inside and putting the uterus antivert uh, antiverting the uterus but if in a resting state usually these two the the tube rests on the on the ureter and right now uh, it's like kind of a little, little lifted above and that's how you can see this is the course see this is the if you can see if you can appreciate this is the common iliac artery right and over here is the junction here inside is going the internal iliac artery and here the the thicker one this is actually the external iliac artery somewhere right under this or close to this so this is the ureter which is channeling over here once you cut this broad ligament it's kind of laterally delineated delineated and this is the broad ligament actually with which they are in close connection with the the ureter part okay and when you delineate it laterally and then you put the clamp then it's fine everything is okay but what happens later on is also important if it gets slipped away the pedicle kind of slips so this is the anatomy that i wanted you to know because that's the part of pelvic anatomy we we're going to be talking about